Breaking news, the new poll with just one week left. Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, where this race stands right now. Clinton, President Obama, Vice President Biden, all turning back to Trump. Trump revealing a change in tone, his closing argument tonight. Tonight, the latest on the emails and the $20,000 six-foot portrait of Trump bought with money from his own charity. The deadly collision during rush hour, two buses, a car, at least six people killed. We're on the scene tonight. The new and chilling images just released. The urgent manhunt, the killer cornered by police. He unloads his AK-47 on the officers. The state of emergency at this hour, the deadly gas pipeline explosion right here in America. That line reaching from New York all the way to Texas. Neighbors warned, and what now for gas prices? And the mysterious and now deadly illness. This six-year-old boy, the list of cases growing in the U.S. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and we begin tonight with major developments in the race for the White House. Election night just one week from tonight. Nearly 28 million Americans have already voted. And this evening, take a look. This race is now a dead heat. Our latest tracking poll showing Donald Trump ahead of Hillary Clinton, 46 to 45. The first time in our polling Trump has been ahead since May. And this evening, Hillary Clinton getting help from the president, the vice president, as they try to shift attention back to Donald Trump. Amid those headlines about newly discovered emails, there is new reporting from the FBI in a moment. But first, ABC Cecilia Vega on the trail with Clinton getting help in Florida tonight. Just seven days to go, and Hillary Clinton is determined to do one thing, put the focus back on Donald Trump. He sure has spent a lot of time demeaning, degrading, insulting, and assaulting women. And right there with her to deliver this blistering assault, Alicia Machado. He said to me, Miss Piggy, Miss Housekeeping, Miss Eating Machine. The former beauty queen Donald Trump insulted because of her weight. I mean, really, can we just stop for a minute? and reflect on the absurdity of Donald Trump finding fault with Miss Universe. No mention of those emails or the FBI's investigation. Instead, Clinton unleashing an all-out assault on her opponent's character. In her latest ad, she finally uses Trump's own words from that now infamous bus video. Grab him by the And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. <laughs> And here in Florida, a list of the people Trump has insulted. Maybe for some of you, it's what he said about a judge born in Indiana. Well, we can't trust him because his parents were born in Mexico. And then Trump went on to attack a gold star family. Florida, a state Clinton sees as key to victory. Just in the last week, Clinton making 14 stops here. It's almost hard to believe, isn't it? There are only seven days left in this election. So are you ready to vote? Yeah. Clinton calling on her powerful friends to make a last minute push. 17 events today alone. Seven surrogates in eight battleground states. President Obama in Ohio taking on Trump too. I want you to focus on the choice that you face in this election. Yeah. Donald Trump is uniquely unqualified to be president. Yeah. He is temperamentally unfit to be commander in chief. And Cecilia Vega with us live tonight from Florida. And Cecilia, a lot of the messaging from Hillary Clinton late today on that stage seemed clearly aimed at women voters. She is aware of the gender gap in the national polls. She certainly is, David. And our latest poll has her above Donald Trump nine points when it comes to women nationally. Look, this is her closing argument. She is trying to show America who she says Donald Trump is, especially when it comes to women using his own words and right here in Florida. And hey, today is saying this is a state that is so important for her, David. Florida will be key on election night. Cecilia Vega, our thanks to you. Meanwhile, tonight, Donald Trump in two states where Hillary Clinton is leading. He needs to turn some blue states red on election night. Trump with a new tone today, his closing argument amid that new image emerging as well of that six-foot portrait purchased by his own charity. ABC's Tom Yamas in Wisconsin tonight. Tonight, with just seven days to go, Donald Trump departing from his fiery speeches to deliver a traditional closing argument. We must cut our ties with the small, bitter, petty politics of the past. At that Pennsylvania event, running mate Mike Pence spoke first and uncharacteristically six minutes longer than the nominee himself. Then came Trump, 
with a promise. He will overturn Obamacare as soon as he's sworn in. I will ask Congress to convene a special session so we can repeal and replace. And we will do it, and we will do it very, very quickly. It is a catastrophe. But the strangest part of the speech, what Trump left out. No mention of Hillary Clinton's email investigation. In fact, few attacks on Clinton at all. I'm asking you to dream big, to push for bold change, and to believe in a movement powered by our love for each other and our love for our country. But Trump unable to avoid some of the controversies dogging him this campaign. The Washington Post publishing this image, a six-foot self-portrait Trump reportedly bought using money from his charitable foundation. Despite the questions about his charitable giving and his refusal to release his taxes, Trump's most loyal supporters are sticking with him. We're outside a rally here in Wisconsin. Take a look at this line as far as the eye can see. Still, Today, the New York Times out with a front page story scrutinizing how Trump may have avoided paying federal income taxes for years. Today on GMA, his deputy campaign manager signaling voters may not get answers before Election Day. So he's not going to release his tax returns before the election? He's going to release them when his audit's uh, complete. Even though there are several returns not under audit? Uh, he's Tom Yamas joins us now from Wisconsin tonight. And Tom, we of course saw Trump in Pennsylvania earlier today, now in Wisconsin. Both of these blue states at this point, at least according to the polling, but he needs some of this blue, as I mentioned, to turn red on Election Day. And David, now he's putting his money where his mouth is. We've learned tonight the Trump campaign is spending $25 million in several battleground states, including here in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, but also in other states, some consider to be Hail Marys, to turn red, states like New Mexico and Michigan. David? New spending in some of those key states. Tom Yamas, our thanks to you as well. And next to the firestorm over the FBI and the newly discovered emails so close to the election, FBI Director James Comey, of course, revealing the new action against the advice of his boss, Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Tonight here, we have learned that the two of them have met since that announcement. Let's get right to ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas. He's live at the FBI tonight. Pierre? David, Jim Comey defied his bosses at the Justice Department five days ago when he dropped a bombshell about the Clinton email investigation. But ABC News has learned FBI Director Comey and Lynch had a brief one-on-one -on -one yesterday after a national security meeting here at the FBI. We're told Lynch and Comey talked about how he was doing, and she told him he would have all the necessary resources to make this work. Today, we got a glimpse of Comey at a memorial service for a beloved former justice official, but on his way out, he would not answer any questions. The Lynch-Comey meeting was described as cordial and the first time the two had talked in person since this erupted. David? And Pierre, no new indication tonight as to whether or not we will hear from the FBI director before Election Day? None tonight, David. They say the investigation is proceeding. No word on what's happening with the emails. Pierre Thomas on his beat at the FBI. Pierre, thank you. And one week from tonight, Election Day, our coverage begins, of course, with World News Tonight. And at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'll be joining George and the entire powerhouse political team. We'll be here all night long. And as I mentioned last night, it could be a very long night. In the meantime, we do turn to other news tonight and to Baltimore, a deadly bus accident, a school bus on the way to pick up the first students of the morning, veering into oncoming traffic, shattering the side of a city bus, killing five people on board that bus and the school bus driver as well. A police official calling the scene horrific. ABC's Mary Bruce on the scene tonight. Both of those buses violently ripped apart. The gnarled wreckage unrecognizable, except for a steering wheel. Undeclared this mass casualty. Police say the school bus careened down this street like a horrific pinball. It truly looks like a bomb went through the bus. It's roughly 6.30 a.m. when the school bus plows into the back of a Ford Mustang, then crashes into a cement pillar before colliding at a high speed with an oncoming transit bus tearing into the driver's side. Six people killed, including the driver of the school bus. Firefighters cutting through the school bus in search of students. Thankfully, none are on board. You can still see debris strewn across the street here. And look at what's left of that Mustang car. The back of it completely ripped apart. The car shredded. The driver of that Mustang tonight overcome with emotion. Goes out to the families who lost loved ones. Tonight, the NTSB is on the scene investigating the cause. Now, one thing missing from this scene, skid marks. Police say the bus may not have braked.
David? Mary Bruce on the scene there for us. Mary, thank you. Next tonight, new and chilling images just released this evening. The violent end to a week-long manhunt. Oklahoma State Troopers releasing video of the final moments. Aerial video showing the suspect using his truck as a shield, trading fire, and then ultimately brought down. ABC's Jim Avila with the images taking us inside that takedown. Low quality video, high quality police work. As the deadly rampage of Oklahoma's madman on the run comes to an all out end. Michael Vance was uh, our worst case scenario, period. Vance, a fugitive since he murdered his aunt and uncle and shot two police officers outside Oklahoma City nine days ago, bragging about more trouble on Facebook. Cornered Sunday night, running right through a roadblock, firing 60 rounds from his AK-47 at five trailing cops. This state trooper firing through his own windshield with a military-style M4 rifle. Just listen to the bullets fly. Vance using his stolen one-ton pickup like a tank. Rolling it toward officers. Shooting at you guys. That's just laying down the middle of the road. Where he died from multiple gunshot wounds. This was the night that we were going to make sure that he didn't hurt anybody else. David, with Vance dead, authorities arrested two of his construction co workers and his girlfriend, charging them with helping him escape. David? Jim Avila with us tonight, Jim. Thank you. And next this evening, the governor of Alabama declaring a state of emergency and warning of a gas shortage after an explosion and fire in a major gas line. The Colonial Pipeline running from Houston, Texas to the port of New York and New Jersey, supplying much of the East Coast. That line rupturing for the second time in two months now, and tonight much of it remains offline. Here's ABC's Philip Mena on the deadly explosion. That massive pipeline fire sending thick smoke into the air. Look how black that smoke is. Aerial footage showing the haze blanketing a vast swath of land just south of Birmingham, Alabama. Sound like they have some injuries. I think we need to start additional. The fire erupting shortly before 3 p.m. Monday when the gas line was struck by a track hoe making repairs. It looked like there was like a plane crash. I've never seen anything like this. One worker killed, several others injured. As emergency responders raced to contain the blaze, the critical main gas line shut down part of a 5,500 mile pipeline, raising concerns of shortages and price increases at the pump. This explosion happened a few miles from where a pipeline leaked in September, causing a hike in gas prices in the southeast. The track hoe that struck the gas pipeline was actually working to fix a problem from that earlier leak. It may take days or longer to get the main gas line reopened. David? Philip Bennett tonight. Philip, thank you. We turn next to Georgia and emotional testimony in the hot car murder trial. The accused ex-wife taking the stand for a second day now, revealing tonight new details about their failed marriage, but still testifying in her ex-husband's defense. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. After months of being painted as a monster by prosecutors accused of intentionally leaving his son to die in this hot SUV, 35-year-old Justin Ross Harris is getting help on the witness stand from, of all people, the former wife he betrayed. I'm humiliated. If I never see him again after this day, that's fine. Clearly, there's no love lost, but Leanna Taylor says she still doesn't believe Harris meant to kill their 22-month-old son, Cooper, in June of 2014. She agrees with his defense that he accidentally forgot to drop the boy off at this daycare on his way into work. Prosecutors say Harris left the child in the car because he wanted a child-free life and say while his son was dying in the parking lot outside his Atlanta office, Harris was inside sexting with other women. She still says he wouldn't have hurt their son. You also love this little boy? Yes, he did. Yeah. Very much. Another turn. There were accusations that Harris went and researched hot car deaths online before his son died. But those were knocked down in court. Tonight, family members are testifying that he loved his son. And even people at the daycare agree, David. Steve Osinsami, thank you. There is still much more ahead on World News tonight this Tuesday. The mystery illness turning deadly tonight. A six-year-old boy becoming the latest victim. The list of cases growing in the U.S. now 33 states and counting. Your money tonight. Retailers getting a huge jump start on Black Friday. They're not waiting until Thanksgiving this year. In fact, tonight, two of the biggest deals revealed already, including $500 off 
some of those flat screens. And watch your step tonight, the rock climber scaling this cliff and that incredible moment. He survives it, but it was not easy. I accept I'm not the deep sea fisherman I was. I accept I'm not out on the ocean wrestling marlin. I even accept I have a higher risk of stroke due to AFib, a type of irregular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem. But I won't go after anything with less than my best. So if I can go for something better than warfarin, I'll do that too. Eliquis. Eliquis reduced the risk of stroke better than warfarin. Plus, it had significantly less major bleeding than warfarin. Eliquis had both. That's what I wanted to know. Don't stop taking Eliquis unless your doctor tells you to. As stop